Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and today I'm doing several different videos. I just finished a garden harvest and garden tour and I'll link that above and that's for my indoor gardens. And on that tour I showed you a little bit about some fig cuttings that I'm doing. Now I'm not a propagation expert. I'm not really a fig expert. I live in Utah zone 7. A lot of times we'll have zone 6 winters but they've upgraded us to a zone 7. But I've been experimenting with growing figs outdoors for the last, I think, three seasons. And we've had some success. We especially had some success with harvest this year. So I'd like to up my game and kind of test different varieties and see what can grow in Utah. There's a lot of people growing figs in Utah, but not a lot of people have shared their successes and their failures. And I'd like to change that. And I'd like to be able to up the amount of varieties that we're able to grow here. Now, the main one that we grow here in Utah is the standard Chicago hardy. It's a very hardy fig, does really well. There's also a lot of people growing brown turkey. There's some people growing desert king. Just, just your basic hardy figs, the ones that you hear the most often are what everybody is growing. But I saw somebody online who was offering cold hardy figs and there was a pack of them, a pack of nine for $35 and I couldn't pass that up. And I want to show you a little bit about the varieties that I got from him and show you the cuttings, show you how they're doing right now. And then we're going to do some cuttings from my own tree, which is a Rondé Bordeaux. Now the bucket that I'm growing the figs in is a little too heavy to carry. So I'm gonna get you down on that level and show you what we have. Now these are my fig cuttings. I'm really excited about them. These were planted on the 29th of October. This was just a couple of weeks ago. Right now it is mid-November and we're already getting some success. If you can see, there is some buds coming up. And when I gently wiggle the cuttings, they're definitely rooted in. The only one that's not rooted in is this one and I think this one is a desert king. So let me show you the cuttings that I have and we'll go over a little bit about how we've rooted them and why we've done what we've done. So this fig right here, is actually a Rondé Bordeaux that I did. Pardon my writing, my handwriting is horrible. I've had several hand surgeries and they just don't function normally. But this is a Rondé Bordeaux cutting I took before the tree went dormant. It feels like it's rooted in, there's no green growth happening, but it looks like it's starting to shrivel a little bit. So we'll just wait and see what happens with this fig. So actually, before I go on any further with the varieties, let's talk about the setup. So I watched a ton of videos on how you can get fig cuttings to root, and everybody has different opinions. Everybody has different mixes. The ones that I really like is I really like Millennial Gardener, and I will link one of his videos on how he does his fig cuttings up on the top and down at the bottom. So a lot of what I'm doing is from him. Now I do not, I'm not using his exact mix, but what it, from what I got gathered, you know, because everybody has their own mixes, what I gathered is you need a really well draining soil that actually still holds moisture. You want to avoid rot before they've rooted, but you also want to be able to have them in a, in a medium where it's easy to pot them up again. So when the, when the roots are all done growing, you want to be able to pot these up to another pot without the root mixture falling apart. Um, Millennial Gardener in the video that I'm going to link you to, he actually used mostly vermiculite with a little bit of potting soil and some bark finds in it. I upped that. I just used what I had. So I had some cactus mix that's really well draining. I added some vermiculite to it and then some Promix potting soil. So it's a well draining mixture and it does hold moisture. I've only had to water these once since I've potted them up and they seem to be doing well. So the other thing that a millennial gardener does is he uses these big tubs and puts them on a large heating mat. Now I have one of the really long heating mats. It's four feet long and about two feet wide. And it also has a temperature gauge on it. And that's what this is. So millennial gardener says the best temperature to root figs is, is at 77 degrees. So I have my temperature gauge set at 77 degrees stuck in one of the middle pots so that we can keep the soil temperature at that temperature. And it seems to have worked really well. Now he also puts them in a tub without a covering on it. He says you don't want to hold too much moisture in it, but you also want to up the humidity a little bit. So too much humidity is bad. It causes rot, too little humidity, and your, and your cuttings are going to dry out. So this seems to have worked really well. This is in my grow room and my grow room has a lot of plants in it and it seems to have a lot of humidity. 
So that's about it in what you need for to do fig cuttings. So I'm going to show you how I planted these fig cuttings with some more of my Ronde Bordeaux in just a little bit, but I wanted to go over more of my varieties. So this one right here, I don't know how cold hardy it is. This was just in the pack. This one's called Thermolito. It's not showing really any signs of new growth, but the buds are starting to swell a little bit and it feels like it's rooted in there pretty tightly. Thermolito is going to be a green fig, supposedly one of the better tasting figs, but it's also a very rare fig, so there's not a ton of information on it. So I'm keeping this fig and I'm gonna see how it does. The next one over is Al Sicilian and there's not a lot of information on this one either other than it's a Sicilian fig and it is supposedly cold hardy town to zone 7. Now I do cover my figs and try to treat them as if we're going to have a zone 5 winter because I don't want them dying back because a lot of my figs don't have an early Brava crop which is the crop that um, comes out and and forms on old wood if you have a Brava crop, you can get figs out early enough to ripen before, the, before our first frost. And our first frost is usually mid-October. So if you have late ripening figs, or if you have figs that don't have a Brava crop, then those are not likely really to ripen before our first frost. And I like to plant my figs in ground. So anyway, this Al Sicilian is probably one that I'm going to sell once it gets rooted. And we've got a little tiny tip of new growth right there. The one that I showed you before, this one is the LSU Purple. This one has the most growth on it. You can see the growth bud down there. This one's also hardy to zone seven and it seems to have a mid to early ripening crop. This is the Marsalis Black. I, it feels rooted in there, but I'm not seeing any new growth. This one also, I think has a Brava crop. Um, I'll try and put information on the screen because I, I'm just going off memory right now and I might get this wrong. But I think the Marsalis Black has a, an early Brava crop and it's a zone 7. This is a Chicago Hardy. I already have a Chicago Hardy so I'm going to be selling this. They are a zone six. They're one of the most cold hardy figs. And if you don't let it die to the ground, it ripens early enough that you can actually get a good crop of figs in, um, in Utah. This middle one is Italian honey. This is one that I think I wanna try and keep. It's a zone six, a green fig, supposedly a very sweet honey flavor, and it also has an early Brava crop. This one is the one that has not rooted yet. This is a Desert King. And the Desert King, from what I've heard, is a good one to grow here in Utah if you can protect it so that it does not die back in the winter. If it dies back in the winter, you will lose the Brava crop because it forms on old wood. And any of the new, and any of the figs that form on the new wood, it sounds like they need the fig, the fig wasp is a pollinator and the fig wasp is only located in certain areas in California. So you would not get a crop if you, if you lose the Brava crop on the Desert King. Now this is another one that I'd like to try because I heard the flavor is really good and that the early Brava crop, if you can protect it well enough to get that Brava crop, is really good tasting. This right here is a Violette de Bordeaux. We're also seeing new growth on this one. It feels rooted in really nicely. And the Violette de Bordeaux is also another really good fig tree for the state of Utah because it ripens early enough and is cold hardy enough that you can actually get figs here. Now this is a Colonel Littmans and I'll put the name on the screen because I can't remember exactly. Colonel Littmans uh, Black Cross, that's it. Colonel Littmans Black Cross. I'm not seeing any new growth on it, but it feels really well rooted in. This is one that doesn't seem like it's going to be as hardy. It says it's hardy to zone eight, so I don't know how it got in this batch, but I'll probably sell this one to somebody who's, you know, who maybe has a greenhouse or who will like to try and see how well it does. Now we're outside with my Ronde Bordeaux. I wanted to show you my tree really quickly and show you how I chose my cuttings. It's really cold, so we're going to do this really quickly. This is my Ronde Bordeaux. I'm going to leave this one uncovered all winter as a test, just to see how it does. Sorry about the dog barking. 
But as you can see, we had a ton of figs that did not ripen on this tree. We've gone through several days of freezing cold temperatures. But from what I've heard, now keep in mind, I am not an expert on figs. But what you're looking for is a branch that started to turn brown and that's and they say that is a lignified branch and those are supposed to be the branches that are easier to root now the one that i chose was not a lignified branch you know the earlier one that i showed you and the non-lignified branches are the ones that are green like these they're really new growth and they have not had time to harden up now I did the cuttings last night and I chose from several different areas to take cuttings from. One was down here and as you can see I cut it just, and hopefully you can see that I cut it just above a node. You can see where that figlet is and it's not focusing, but I cut it just above that node. And we did take a cutting from another thicker branch and we cut that and we cut that just above this node. So now let's take you back inside and show you how we're going to pot those cuttings up. So now we're back inside. I have several different cuttings that I've made here. I'm only going to show you how to pot these up on one of them because like I said, my pots are a little bit too heavy to put on the table and these are not really extremely stable. So having too many of them on the table will probably have me knocking a few of them over and making a mess. So we only need to show you with one. I'm going to show you with this large cutting. Now, as I said, you can do them with any size cutting almost any time of year, but the best time to do it is when, this, when the tree is dormant. A lot of people take their cuttings in the fall. Some of them take their cuttings in the spring, but you can find cuttings either from somebody who grows figs near you, or you can go online and find, find them online. So as I said, this is my Ronde Bordeaux. First thing I need to do is mark my cutting. Now I'm actually going to use this silver Sharpie. Now I'm going to try to write legibly, but as I've said, I've had several different hand surgeries and now my hands are cold. So my handwriting is going to be worse than ever. I have absolutely no grip strength, but I'm going to mark the fig and I'm also going to look at which area is up and which is down. Now I cut my cuttings flat on the bottom and you can see these little buds right here. Maybe you can see the little buds right here. They're pointing up. That's the way you know which way you should face your fig. So I'm going to mark it with this. So this is Ronde Bordeaux. So I'm going to RDB. And just as I thought, it's illegible. But we're going to mark the cutting. And then I'm going to use some duct tape. And on this duct tape, I'm going to write what fig cutting it is and the date that we're putting the cutting in the pot. I think today is the 10th, so we're going to do Ronde Bordeaux. Do you know, I just went and found my black pen. We're just going to do it in black just to make sure. Ronde Bordeaux, the 10th of November. Then we'll stick this on my little tree pot here. These are tree pots that I got from Greenhouse Megastore, and they've worked really beautifully. And, the, and you have to buy a tray for them separately, because as I said, these are kind of wobbly, and they don't stand up on their own very well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little pen. I'm going to make a hole just so that I don't rub off the root stimulator. Now, I like the powdered root stimulators. I've seen a lot of people online use the, use the paint on kind, the gel kind, but Millennial Gardener says that he actually feels that the gel kind can cause some more rot and it doesn't help as much as it could. So I like the powdered kind. I've always used the powdered kind. We've coated the end with that rooting powder. Now, another thing that I've seen a lot of people do online is to scrape down to the cambium layer to encourage rooting. But I don't see how that is going to help. I, to me, that just opens up area for more rot. And Millennial Gardener seemed to agree with me. In past years, he's scraped his fig cuttings, but this last year he didn't do it. And he said he seemed to have more success. And it was really interesting because he did show fig cuttings that he had scraped and uh, the roots don't form near the scraped areas. So anyway, I'm not going to scrape my fig cuttings. I didn't scrape any of the ones that I started before and it looks like I'm getting a good percentage of them rooting. So we're just gonna go with what worked previously. 
We're going to stick that down so that there is at least two of the nodes covered. And then I'm just going to water it in once. And the only reason I'm going to water it in is just to make sure that the soil is packed down there and there's not any holes around the roots. So that's how I rooted my past fig cuttings and that's how I'm going to root the rest of these. And it's just going to be interesting to see if this works. As I said, this is the first time I've been rooting fig cuttings. So I'd love to hear if you've tried rooting any fig cuttings and if you've had any success and what methods you use that are successful for you. So I hope my videos are helpful to you. I hope you like, subscribe, share them with your friends and go have a wonderful garden adventure.